Hi, welcome to my video and thank you for joining me where we figure out how do I factor this. This is a review video so that you know how to factor your binomials, your trinomials, your four-term polys, you know how to factor out a GCF, and you also can solve polynomial equations, which is the second half of this video. So if you're ready to do these problems along with me, I'd say grab a pencil and paper or dry erase board and marker so that you can test them out, see how you're doing, pause, play the video, however you need to. Ready? Let's go. So our directions say determine what type of polynomial you have and then check for a GCF and factor. You can always multiply out your factored answer to see if you get the original product. All right, so I'm going to make my screen a little smaller. All right, so here are some of the problems that we are going to be taking a look at together. I'm just going to make my face much smaller in the corner. There we go. Okay, so first one we're going to look at is calc uh, factoring out a GCF of just a binomial. Here I have 8x to the fourth minus 12x to the third. So with a binomial, we only have two situations, a GCF and a difference of squares. Right now it's telling us factor out a GCF. So the greatest common factor of 8 and 12 would be a 4, not a 2. Greatest common factor of x to the 4th and x to the 3rd would be x to the 3rd. So that's my GCF, my greatest common factor of these two terms. Now I have to figure out 4x to the 3rd times what will make it x, 8x to the 4th. So let's see, 4 times 2 makes the 8. x to the 3rd times x makes it x to the 4th. 4 times negative 3 will make that negative 12. And I already have my x to the third, so I don't need anything else. And that's my factored answer. I know it's completely factored because I look at what's in my parentheses, 2x minus 3. And there's nothing else I could have factored out of that. GCF for just a trinomial. So 8x to the fourth minus 12x to the third plus 6x. The greatest common factor of 8, 12, and 6 would be 2. I look at my variables now, x to the fourth, x to the third, and x. I can factor out just one of those x's from each term. And now I get to fill in my parentheses. 2 times 4 gives me 8. x times x to the third would give me x to the fourth. 2 times negative 6 would give me that negative 12. x times x to the second would give me that x to the third. And then 2x times 3 is 6x. I know I'm completely factored. I look at my trinomial here. It's not one of those other special trinomials that I could factor that we're going to look at in just a moment. And there's no GCF here. Now, difference of squares. When I go to factor out a difference of squares, I see a perfect square minus a perfect square. I first check for a GCF. There's no GCF of x squared minus 49, so I can't do what I did up top. But it is a perfect square minus a perfect square. And the way we factor a difference of squares, a special binomial, it's the square root of the first term, x, square root of the last term, 7. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. And that's it. It's x plus 7, x minus 7. Now, factoring a trinomial where a is equal to 1. So here I have a special trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c, where I notice my a, my number in front of my x squared, is really just a 1. When you have a trinomial in this form, your sole job is to figure out <laughs> what numbers multiply to get negative 20, but add up to get a negative 8. So we're looking at the factor pairs of negative 20. So 1 times 20, 2 times 10, 4 and 5. And to make it multiply to get a negative 20, one of them would have to be negative. And if one of them is negative, it then needs to be able to have a sum add up to get negative 8. Am I going to be able to get a negative 8 out of a 1 and a 20? No. What about a 2 and a 10? Yeah. What about 4 and 5? No. If you choose 2 and 10 to get to a negative 8, which one of those needs to be negative, the 2 or the 10? So that when you add them up, you get negative 8. If you said the 10, you're correct. So it's x plus 2, x minus 10. Now we also learned in this lesson that it doesn't matter the order. So you could write x minus 10, x plus 2, but the plus sign has to go with the 2, the minus sign has to go with the 10. Okay, we're going to look at some problems below that. 
We're going to go off of the difference of squares and off of the trinomial of a equals 1, but these have a GCF, so it's got that one extra step for it. So when I look at 8m squared minus 50, I notice it's not a perfect square minus a perfect square, like x squared minus 49. I do have a greatest common factor of these two terms. The GCF of 8 and 50 is 2. So if I factor out a 2 from both of these terms, I'm left with 4m squared minus 25. And what I need to know about what's left over in my parentheses is that it looks just like this special case, difference of squares. A perfect square minus a perfect square. A perfect square minus a perfect square. Now, you know it's a perfect square because you could take the square root of it. The square root of 4 is 2. The square root of m squared is 2m. I'm sorry, m. The square root of 25 is 5. So when I go ahead and I take the square root of 4m squared, it's 2m. The square root of 25 is 5, and then remember, 1 gets a plus, 1 gets a minus. That is my completely factored form. Let's take a look at a trinomial where a is 1, but there is a GCF. So 2x squared plus 10x plus 8. What can I factor out of these three terms? Hopefully you agree it's a 2. So if I factor out a 2, I'm left with x squared plus 5x plus 4. Now, I just look at the parentheses that's left over in my, uh, the trinomial that's left over in my parentheses. I'm not worried about that too. Just like the two of the GCF here just hung out on the outside, same thing happens here. What I really wanna focus on is just this trinomial and I wanna factor it the same way I factored this trinomial up here. I look at the four. What are my factor pairs of four? One and four, two and two. Which factor pair of four is gonna add up to give me a five? Hopefully you see it's one and four. So it's x plus 1, x plus 4, and that's my completely factored form. And order doesn't matter. It could be x plus 4 first, x plus 1 second. Okay. Now for the more, not complicated, but the problems that have some more steps and some more thought. So now we're going to look at a trinomial where a is not equal to 1. In this trinomial, notice there's no GCF. This is not the kind of trin trinomial I could just list the factor pairs of 3 because the a value is not one. What I have to do first is do a times c. So two times three is six, okay? Two times three is six. Then I list the factor pairs of six. One and six, two and three. Which one of those factor pairs, one and six or two and three, will give you a negative seven? One and six. What kind of one and what kind of six would you need so that they add up to give you a negative seven? you said both negative, you are correct. So here's the process. We bring down our first term, 2x squared, and we rewrite negative 7x using the negative 1 and the negative 6. So a negative 1x and a negative 6x. It's like combining like terms, but the opposite. Instead of putting two terms together and getting negative 7x, we're taking negative 7x and we're breaking it apart. So that's what's happening here. We're so used to combining these two terms together, but instead we're purposely doing the opposite. And then we bring down our plus three. Now we have four terms. And what we learned for a four term poly is factor by grouping. So we have to find the GCF of the first two terms and the GCF of the second two terms. And then if we see the twins, we know we're doing well. So two X squared minus one X. My GCF of these first two terms is just an X. That's all I can factor out of my first binomial. If I factor out an X from these first two terms, I'm left with 2X minus 1. My second binomial is negative 6X plus 3. And we learned that if you're factoring out the GCF of a binomial, if the first term is negative, then you factor out a negative. So in negative 6X plus 3, we're going to factor out a negative 3. Now, Negative 3 times what is 6x? 2x. Negative 3 times what is positive 3? Negative 1. We know we're correct because we see the twins. 2x minus 1, 2x minus 1. Perfect. First part of my factored form are my GCFs, so the x and the minus 3. The other part of my factored form is one of the twins. If I was to distribute this all out, it would bring me right back to this trinomial. A four-term poly, so now we've got some practice with that. 
we can go to this pretty nice now. If I give you four terms, GCF of the first two terms, x, x times x is x squared, x times 5 is 5x. My GCF of 3x and 15 would be a positive 3. If I factor out a 3, I'm left with x plus 5. I know I'm good because I see my twins. My GCFs of x and plus 3 are in one part of my factored answer, and one of the twins is the other. Okay, let's take a look now at these last three problems for factoring. So GCF of the trinomial where a is not 1. So 6x squared plus 10x plus 4. What do you see as my GCF of these three terms? What goes into 6, 10, and 4? You said 2. You're correct. I'm going to factor out that 2. So I'm left with 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Now, what we're reminding ourselves is this is the type of trinomial where you don't just list the factor pairs of 2. You have to do 3 times 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. List the factor pairs of 6, 1 and 6, 2 and 3. And now we have to be a little extra careful. We have to figure out which factor pair could get us a 5, positive 5. Now, 1 and 6 could technically get you a positive 5. You would need a positive 6 and a negative 1. But what do a positive 6 and a negative 1 multiply to get? They'd multiply to get a negative 6. And we don't want negative 6, we want positive 6. So what about 2 and 3? What kind of 2 and 3 would you need to get a positive 5? Both positive. So if I use a, them both positive, not only will they add to get positive 5, but they'll multiply to get that positive 6 that I need. So 2 and 3 is the factor pair. The GCF of 2 hangs out on the outside just hangs out the whole way. I can actually show you it's just going to hang the whole time on the outside. And now I factor this trinomial here the same way I factored the trinomial up top. I bring down my first term, 3x squared. I break apart 5x into two terms. We're purposely taking this trinomial and purposely creating a four-term poly. So 5x becomes plus 2x plus 3x. Okay, that's the factor pair I chose. And I bring down my plus 2. I factor out the GCF of my first two terms. So the GCF of 3x squared plus 2x is x. Notice I had to put brackets here now because I'm using parentheses within the brackets. I factor out an x from these first two terms. I'm left with 3x plus 2. I'm also left with 3x plus 2 here. And there's no GCF of 3x plus 2 except for 1. So that's actually my GCF. So I'm going to write plus 1 open parentheses, 3x plus 2. Now, that 2, that GCF of 2 from the beginning, hangs out on the outside. It's still there. My GCFs now, x plus 1, go in the first set of parentheses, okay, x here and the 1 here, and then one of my twins is my second, and that's it. Let's take a look at this four-term poly. GCF of x squared plus 6x would be x. If I factor out an x, I'm left with x plus 6. We've seen this now. If you have a binomial and it starts with a negative, that means we factor out a negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative 2. Negative 2 times x is negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative, I'm sorry, positive 6 gives me that negative 12. I know I'm doing good because I see my twins. x minus 2 goes in the first parenthesis. x plus 6 goes in the second. Last one, greatest common factor with a four-term poly. What's my greatest common factor of 3, 18, 6, and 36? 3, 18. I could factor it out like that. I actually didn't. Well, so we're going to see something in the answer. If I factor out a 3x from the first two terms, you'll see the GCF I do at the end. I didn't really if I factor out a 3x, I'm left with x plus 6. GCF of negative 6, x minus 36. GCF here would be a negative 6. And then x plus 6. My 3x minus 6 goes in one parenthesis. My, my x plus 6 goes in the other. Now, this is not completely factored. 
Everything else we did, you can't factor out a GCF of 2n plus 5, x plus 4, 2x minus 1. Like, they're completely factored out. But look at 3x minus 6. What's the GCF of 3x minus 6? If you said 3, you're right. So if I factor out a 3, it's really x minus 2 from here. I factor out a 3 from this term, and then x plus 6. Now, what I could have done from the very beginning, and I'm going to open up a new little screen here. I give myself like a little white blob to go over. Is I could have factored out a 3 right from the beginning. So if I did 3, open parentheses, x squared plus 6x minus 2x minus 12. And then I continue to bring the 3 down. I'm going to factor out my GCF of these first two terms, x. Then I would have x plus 6. Factor out my GCF for the second two terms, so negative 2, x plus 6. Then my final factored form would be 3. Then my GCFs, so x minus 2. Okay, the x and minus 2, and then one of my twins. And so notice, I can either factor out the GCF from the beginning, which I thought I did here, or I can factor it out at the end, but notice my end result is the exact same. So I hope that was helpful for you. Now, wait, how do I solve this? So how do we solve a polynomial equation? If you've watched my other videos, you've seen me go through this three-step process every single time. Step one, set the equation equal to zero. Step two, factor. And we just went through all the different factoring methods we might have. Step three, set each factor equal to zero and solve. All right. So let's take a look. 8x to the fourth minus 12x to the third equals zero. Step one, set the equation equal to zero. It's already done. Step two, factor. This is a binomial. All we know how to do with binomials right now are factor out a GCF or do difference of squares. Here, I definitely see a GCF. The GCF of these two terms would be 4x to the third. If I factor 4x to the third out, I'm left with 2x minus 3. So once the equation is set equal to 0, which this one already was, so check, factor, just did, all I could do is GCF, set each factor equal to 0. If I set 4x to the third equal to 0, the only value of x that will make it equal to 0 is just 0. So that's one of my solutions. If I set 2x minus 3 equal to 0 and I solve, I'd have to add 3, divide both sides by 2, and 3 has to be my second solution. Let's look at x squared equals 49. Step 1, set the equation equal to 0. We've talked about this before. We always rewrite our equations where we send the value to the highest degree as long as the highest degree has a positive leading coefficient. So here I'd want to send my 49 over. So this becomes x squared minus 49 equals 0. It's a binomial. Is there a GCF here? No. Is it a difference of squares? Yes. Perfect square minus a perfect square. So x squared minus 49 becomes x plus 7, x minus 7. If I set x plus 7 equal to 0, I get negative 7 as my first solution. If I set x minus 7 equal to 0, I get positive 7 as my solution. Let's take a look at this trinomial. Step 1, set the equation equal to 0. What would I move? the 20. So this becomes x squared minus 8x minus 20 equals 0. I have to factor now. Factor pairs of negative 20 that give me negative 8. 1 and 20? No. 2 and 10? Yes, as long as the 10 is negative and the 2 is positive. So this becomes x plus 2, x minus 10. We set each one equal to 0. If I set x plus 2 equal to 0, I get negative 2. If I set x minus 10 equal to 0, I get positive 10. All right, so our next problem is 2x squared plus 10x equals negative 8. I, number 1, have to set the equation equal to 0. So I'm going to go ahead and add my 8. So this becomes 2x squared plus 
plus an x plus eight equals zero. And then always want to check for a GCF. Is there a greatest common factor of two, 10, and eight? Yep, it's two. If I factor out a two, I'm left with x squared plus five x plus four. That two that I factored out just hangs out on the outside. I now look at this trinomial here. What factor pair of four adds up to five? One and four are two and two. One and four. X plus one, X plus four. Set each one equal to zero. And I get my two solutions. Let's jump over here. Eight M squared minus 50 equals zero. So I look for my G, I step one, set the equation equal to zero, done. Step two, factor. I can factor out a two from both terms. If I factor out a two, I'm left with 4m squared minus 25. You hopefully remember this problem from before. This is a difference of squares. It's a perfect square minus a perfect square. That two that I factored out hangs out. Square root of 4m squared is 2m. Square root of 25 is five. One gets plus, one gets minus. If I set 2m plus five equal to zero and solve, I get negative five halves. If I set 2m minus five equal to zero, I get positive five halves. I know I just went through that really quickly, but you can do the math. Last two problems for us. 2x squared equals 7x minus three. So I need to set the equation equal to zero. Now, if I scroll back up so you can see my three steps, remember when we set the equation equal to zero, the process should always be, you are sending thing, everything over to the highest degree side of the highest degree as long as the leading coefficient is positive so what i don't want to do is i don't want to move that 2x squared over i want to send 7x minus 3 over to where 2x squared is so i'm going to subtract the 7x i'm going to add my 3. so i get 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. then i look for a gcf there's no gcf i do 2 times 3 is 6 Factor pairs of six, one and six, two and three. Which one's going to get me that negative seven? It's one and six, a negative one, negative six. We did this exact same problem just before. So you should be looking at this now and saying, I know exactly what to do. I bring down my two X squared. I break apart negative seven X into a negative one X and a negative six X. I bring down my three. GCF of my first two terms is just X. Then I'm left with 2x minus 1. GCF of negative 6x plus 3 is a negative 3. So then I'm left with 2x minus 1. I see my twin, so I know I'm good. My GCFs go in one parenthesis. My twin goes in the other. And then my last step now. Set each equal to 0 and solve. So if I set x minus 3 equal to 0, I get 3. If I set 2x minus 1 equal to 0, I get positive 1 half. Last problem for us. Let's take a look. 6x squared plus 10x equals negative 4. Step 1, set the equation equal to 0. So if I do that, that means I need to add 4. So this becomes 6x squared plus 10x plus 4 equals 0. I check for a GCF. Greatest common factor would be a 2. After I factor out a 2, I'm left with 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Remember that GCF of two just hangs out the whole way. I'm focused just on this trinomial here. I do three times two is six. What factor pair of six gives me a positive five? We did this problem before. It's a positive two and a positive three. So I bring down three X squared. I break apart my middle term into plus two X plus three X. I bring down my last term of positive two. I factor out my GCF of my first two terms in my, uh, my four-term poly here. GCF here would be an X. Then I'm left with 3X plus 2. The GCF of 3X plus 2 is just 1. So I do plus 1 times 3X plus 2. Final factored form, that 2 from the beginning outside. My GCF's X plus 1 goes in one parenthesis. One of my twins, 3x plus 2, is in my second parenthesis. If I set x plus 1 equal to 0, I get negative 1. If I set 3x plus 2 equal to 0, I get negative 2 thirds. 
I hope this video was helpful for you. Join me for my other factoring videos and more for all things Algebra 1. Thanks, guys.